guys, it's Vandy as well, back at another card fight, Vanguard, weekly reveals as on the Vandy. So if you guys enjoy, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and donate to the Patreon. And let's get one started. Today we have a lot of blurbs. Like, okay, to be honest with you, I'm recording this like two days early from when I normally uh, record these. And that's mainly because I know there's going to be a lot of things getting revealed for some reason. It's an instinctive reaction. So I'm recording these, if, I'm recording this part a few days early, and then the second part of this video after a cert after like number 16 i think I i'll tell you when but you'll know that that'll be more like the live reaction of that day so these are coming a few days earlier and then the next part is actually going to come at right time they're still going to go up at the same time but one part's later than the other so it's going to get started first up we have fast the eight i think that's how it is right like v is five and then there's the three eyes which makes it eight i think is that how roman numerals work i have not learned roman numerals in so long and that was one of my favorite things of counting so i think that's how it is so fast the eighth just a 10k five just a 10k vanilla for toke not token rambu for shaman king i hate how they're not doing anything with vanillas like at least in v they gave you reasons to run the vanillas now they're just giving you to them and then forcing you to run them because you have no choice if you want to build the deck but then after one set you're like yeah ditch the vanillas it's like the first thing you ditch like straight up the first thing i did when i was buying my support for my overdress decks was think okay what am i gonna remove the first guys i removed were the vanillas i have cards that won because i have extra space and i normally would be like okay let's throw in like a vanilla that has an extra shield but um, they don't have that in here. So I just decided to say, yeah, screw with the one of Karthus Go, despite the fact I hate normally having those type of things. So Foss the Eighth, questionable why he's here, but hey, I like the name though. Eliza Foss. I sw Eliza Foss. I swear, I know that from somewhere. I mean, yeah, it's obviously from Shaman King, but I swear I've heard that name from somewhere else. 8K base, 5K shield, great on the boost. Continues weird during a battle that it boosted a unit with fast eighth in its card name it gets plus 5k power so 13k booster if it boosts this boy so you know 23k i guess it's a reason to run the vanilla but i still don't say they're worth it but in the trial deck i guess they say they're worth it so three of three of and now into the burbs <laughs> yeah there's gonna be like three other cards here that aren't blurbs and for now we're gonna go straight to the blurbs so first up we have more kumo and this one i'm actually excited about special stealth beast weasel black yes I not gonna say I loved weasels because love is an overextendment, but I like the I I like the idea of weasels, especially with that early rush thing in an Excel deck. And they never got a grade three, and I feel like for you to get like a really prominent deck, you need a grade three. Now that's not always the case. I'm pretty sure a lot of decks can do that without grade threes. Like actually, nothing. But I'm not so sure what a deck is that doesn't have a gr main grade three that is a prominent deck. Can someone tell me a deck that meets that example, please? Because I actually want to know. But that is a type of thing that would be. I guess plausible but in weasels they didn't have it like it was more or less just you guys the main grade three and then you just ran weasels because like that was the deck so it's nice that weasels finally have a main grade three and its skill is a wild stealth special stealth beast grade three has appeared did they i know they was uh, this was on their stream but i cannot believe they made a pokemon reference with this gather your special stealth beast units and launch a powerful attack so pretty much get a bunch of units get stronger now my thing with weasels is that like they were never that powerful in terms of numbers like they got a lot of things out quickly but then like two defensive shut them down like sometimes one defensive depending on when you did in the game but it's really easy to shut them down especially if you're playing a deck that can murder rear guards so maybe an effect that's kind of similar to the new Nura, where it's like counter blast one look at a certain number of cards from the deck call like maybe search your deck counter blast one soul blast one Search your deck for two weasels of different card names, call them to rear, shuffle your deck, and then continuous van, if your opponent's vanguards are greater, three or greater, all of your weasels get some amount of power for each other copy of themselves, or something like that. Probably not that, but like, they all get plus five, making it a lot harder to block them and making them a lot stronger. I feel like that's something that would happen with them, so I'd really like Weasel Black to do something along those lines. Platinum Blonde Fox Spirit Tamiyo. Um, this grade three... I remember fondly, because in Zero, I think I spam him. I think that's him anyways, where he has a limit break. I forgot what his other effect is, but I think he has a limit break as a standard plus five skill. But has a skill to turn into another unit when placed. When attacking with stealth fiends of different names, it powers up. So, this is meant to be a stealth fiend support card. And yet, it's not a stealth fiend. So, why is it this? Like why like, i understand why but like it's nice that they finally gave Nora a support card but what the hell 
it doesn't make sense. I mean, yeah, if it can turn into a different unit in place, but wouldn't it change into a... It'd probably be like turn into another unit with the same card name as something else. Maybe you can copy Huga. I mean, Hugo, whatever it's called, Nura, and you can, like, that counts as a different stealth fiend, I guess. Maybe, I don't know. It's an interesting card. I I'd say look into it. And then we have Hyaki Vogue Reverse, the thing that everyone was awaiting. By locking your allies, call a great amount of Hyaki Vogues in combination with Hyaki Vogue, the unreversed one, overwhelm your opponent with the power of clones. So, Hyaki with Hyuga was very annoying to deal with because they got a lot of power really quickly with the whole board. Presumably, this can do the same thing, but worse. Like, in terms of, like, dealing with, not in terms of having it, having to set it up. So... Interesting card. I can't wait to find this out. Definitely a four of unless it requires you not to run out of four of somehow. Probably gets banned really quickly if it's strong enough, but hey, it's an interesting card and it looks really cool. Now, we have more shenanigan cards. Ghoul Dragon from Grand Blue. This one I question extremely. When it attacks, it can retire your opponent. Yes, really, it says your opponent. Furthermore, it has skill to support Negro Boat. Okay, we have one from Kagura that does that. And while that's not that much of a problem because in V, yeah, you kind of want to ride to get more gifts. I mean, it doesn't make sense why they would give it to a grade two. It probably just means retire rear guard and Bushy just decided not to specify rear guard. They just chose to say opponent. But if it's not a rear guard and it is the vanguard, I question heavily why give this to a grade two from Grand Blue. Why give this to Gramble at all? Why give it to a grade two at all is my question. It's probably just kill a rear guard and they chose to word it that way. I don't understand why, but I question a lot. Next up, we have Negro Bolt. The more cards you put into your drop zone in a turn, all of your rear guards gain an increase in power and shield until your next turn. Okay, that sounds like a really good backup grade three or a really good main grade three because, you know, you could just go really high mill and if you're Mandala, then that's going to be really easy for you and then get a bunch of power, call a bunch of Skull Dragons, big guarding numbers, big swinging numbers. If by some miracle they survive your big swings, they definitely get in past your big guards. If like It's probably for every five cards you've mill, it, your cards get like plus 5k shield and 5k power, which makes them a lot harder to deal with, but still. Or maybe not those numbers exactly, but still. And then Kokaitis Reverse, grade 3, at the end of the battle, your Kokaitis, the original one, attacked. By locking your rear guards, ride it from drop. When it's attacked, it can power by sacrificing your rear guards. So, you know, you get quad drive most likely, or triple drive. So, you get that Vanguard, ride this, get the Protect Gift, lock your rear guards, and then you can sacrifice those rear guards later to get maybe a power up to defend yourself. So, interesting. Definitely not a Protect 2 deck. Maybe you protect one deck, because like you get those sentinels and you get the more power out of it. Especially because you're going to be sacrificing rear guards in terms of locking and um, uh, intercepting. It's probably going to be lock 2 to do it, because I feel like lock 1 would be way too easy. So Kakatis Reverse is an interesting grade 3, and I can't wait to see that too. Next up, we have Eternity Chaser, Endless Flow, and Original Saver 0 for Dimension Police. Energy Chaser, Eternity Chaser, sorry. When ridden on, add the necessary grade 3 to your hand. Furthermore, it has a skill to nullify an opponent's rear guard attack. Okay, first off, so it can nullify rears, which is fine. So we have a PG over here, but followed by, when ridden on, add the necessary grade 3 to hand. What do you mean by necessary? Do you mean necessary to the situation or necessary as in zero? Also, from what? Like, to look at top 7 or just straight up search the deck for a grade 3? Because if it's just straight up search the deck, I feel like someone's going to go on the ban list somewhere to the premium the next time they do a ban list. I don't know why I can foresee that happening, especially when he has a PG or rear guard skill. So, we'll see how that plays out, but I'm kind of interested in that now. <laughs> and then the grade 2, uh, Endless Float. When it's ridden on, increase your vanguard's power while calling itself. And when it attacks during the turn a grade 3 is placed, it further increases the power. So probably just like, you know, give the vanguard plus 5, and when it's placed, or maybe like when rode upon by the grade 3, call it plus 5 to vanguard, it's probably the sec first one. And then if they, if you rode this turn, probably give it like plus 10, probably along those lines. And the grade 3 original saver is 0, your allies and your opponents all will be 0. Naturally, the skill that reduced the opponent's power is present, but beyond that, with its skill that activates from ridden on, combine the powers of grade 3s up and until now with old heroes. So, what well, says with the old hero? So who's the old hero? Is that Ayusha? Are they referring to someone specific? Because they just said the old hero. But now, that's actually something to be interesting. All will be zero. And they say your allies too. 
So it's not just the opponent. From what I'm getting from this, this does it to your field too. So be prepared to lose part of your field to um power. Yeah, the reduce the opponent's power to present. So it probably means like, you know, they lose power and then for every two units maybe that are at zero power or like at a certain number of power or less, you call a copy of zero from deck and then it maybe has a rear guard skill. Like if your opponent's vanguard is so-and-so, it gets plus 5k and a crit, probably along those lines. If it's on van, it gets the crit. So that's probably the case of zero. It would be really interesting to see if that's what actually what it does. And then that standard break rider build is probably going to be counter boss one, um, minus their power and this seems really interesting with zeal and also has potential in other hero decks because it's not necessarily an alien so you, actually i think it is an alien so you could just run in anything else but still zero is an interesting grade three and i like it next up we have our star vader boys and girls mana shark star vader neon grade one if your opponent has a locked card you can call it from drop at the beginning of battle phase so multi-attack Unrivaled Star Vader Radon. At the start of your battle phase, you may call it from drop to a column with Star Vader. It also has a skill that restricts guards when it attacks. So probably like if they have a lock card, they have to guard with two or more. Or they can only guard a trigger, something like that. It's probably the second one. I mean, first one. And then uh, both of them can call from drop. Something tells me it's going to be like Counter Blast 1, Soul Blast 1. If your opponent has a locked card, pay the cost. If you do, call them from drop. I mean, one for each of them, like, one is going to be counter boss one, the other is going to be soul boss one. Something tells me that's the case. If it was early V, that would definitely be the case, but maybe not now. Maybe it's, like, just a discard cost for one of them, or maybe it's just for free, but I'm not so sure. And Star Vader Nebula Lord Dragon. Okay, this one's interesting, and I know it's kind of hard to see it, but the way he stands makes him kind of look like a hero, in my opinion, like an actual, like, savior of justice. But in my opinion, that's not what he is. Like, he's not a savior of justice. We all know this. And it just looks really weird and unfitting, his stance. I like how he looks, and I like the background, but his stance feels so weird looking at it because it does make him look like a hero. Grade 3, lock the rear guard at the expense of allies. Probably means kill a rear guard on your side, lock their rear guard. It's like a fair trade, I guess. Lock even without the opponent's rear guard. <laughs> wait, 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 what? <laughs> Does it mean by lock your rear guard too? <laughs> Wait, is that what it means by the expense of your allies? You lock your side, they lock their side? Or do you mean like lock their damage maybe? Counter blast for them? It's doubtfully lock their field. Maybe lock from their drop? Maybe? As, or lock from top deck? A Star Vader that powers up Star Vaders by the number of your opponent's lock cards. So they just stole that from Glue Ball. So, interesting. I'm actually curious about this one now. Um, we'll wait to see what he does, because I'm actually curious what they mean by lock, I mean, lock at the rear guard of the opponent's expense and lock without their own rear guard. Like, we got a lot of crazy skills to, that have been worded very certainly. That's for damn sure. Now we're only other three card reveals and we have more blurbs. Defensive deployment, Asura Kyo. It has the PG skill that everyone else has. I'm not going to bother reading it. 6k base, grade 1 boost, zero shield. You know, the standard PG skill, if this and another card is in your hand, only one other card, you can use this without paying the cost. Really interesting that they finally gave it to a crossover clan. It's nice that they gave it to this one. Unfortunately, I'm not planning on maining Shaman King. I mean, I might play it if there's something interesting come up, but I doubt it. Doubt it. I wish they gave it to something like Monster Check or Token Rambu. So, it's an interesting PG, though, so it is a reason to run it at 4. Next up, we'll have I'll Send You Straight to Hell, which I can only ever think of Go to Hell from Inazuma 11, where there was literally a move titled Go to Hell. I forgot what is... What, what was it's... Was that his Japanese name or his English name? What was his English name? That was probably his Japanese name. His English name was something like Hell's Descent, maybe? I don't know. I, I want to remember what that name was, but I know its Japanese name was Hell Go to Hell. Anyways, Blitz Order. You may only play this card if you have a unit with Ana Kioma, the PG from last time in his card name. Choose two of your opponent's units, and at the end of turn, their original power becomes zero. So straight up drop the Vanguard to zero, because it just says units, and this is for free. And the only thing you have to do is call a PG for it. I don't know why they made this a card, because that's really easy to do. Like, hell, I'd call PG4 without even thinking twice. Like, I really don't think it's not worth it. Like, call the PG, you play the order, they're losing power. They're probably going to have to drop a PG2. Different is you're getting more attack out of it and more power out of it. Like, maybe a late game card, but still really nice. Like, all around two copies. Channeling, grade two, normal order. You may, oh, this is a blitz order. Never mind, never mind, never mind. I just realized this was, <laughs> I thought this was, I thought this was the normal order. My bad, never mind. I kind of, never mind. <laughs> Let me rethink that decision. Maybe two of, in my opinion, maybe not now. I mean, it's still good because it can drop units power to zero, but that involves you calling a PG for defensive purposes, of course. Channeling, normal order. You may only play it if you have once more the PG in its card name and you count a boss one. Search after one spirit unit card, call to range off your deck. Just a free searcher. 
I mean, for kind of boss one, of course. Interesting that they're making two cards rely on the PG. I don't know why they're doing that. I hope they give us a grade three that has a has that unit's name in it because then it makes it a lot easier to use it. But a, it's still fine. I give it a two of. Ignore that. Next up, we have our next blurs, Sparkling Soul Nikita. Grade one, pay a lot of soul for power up. Leave it to her on your opponent's turn two. So, probably means. She can soul blast a lot, maybe increase her shield and power, increase your vanguard's power for like the battle. Overlapping electric Celia, the grade two. When you have something you're looking for, she might come in handy. What? What, what, what? does she just get you more draws or like does she just search you something by putting herself to soul? I don't understand why they just gave us the most vague description ever. At least everything else actually gave a description more or less to what it might do. But, like, this at most suggests that you're searching or drawing, but that's by assumption. And then there's Explosive Diva, where Farday rock. So they brought her Farday. It turns out she's a rocker now. Uh, grade 3. Although she longed for the brilliant stage of the idol she admired, she couldn't shine because of her own withdrawal. But she's changed since then. Light shines on the main stage, and now she is going to play the leading role. So... If you don't remember Rafarde, she was the one that could get like six drive checks, a bunch of force gifts, and then do this all on second grade three turn while letting five rear guards attack at once. And it was really annoying to deal with. Now she's apparently taking the stage as like the main vanguard. Something tells me she's going to be like, you rest the rear guards and she restands and she gets drives for it. Like if you rest five rear guards, get two gifts and get one additional drive, probably. Like, no, it's probably what's gonna be like, you know, you rest one rear guard, it stands minus one drive, you rest three rear guards, you get um, two force markers out of it, and if you rest five rear guards, then, you know, you get plus one drive instead of minus one drive, like Spectre Duke does, or like swap the drive and the force gift around. But that's probably what it's gonna do, or and I'm really, really interested in that, because it gives the Vanguard more purpose, and I like that. I mean, it's only like two attacks, and they can easily just stop with PG. It would be a lot easier to stop it than the other Rafarde, but if it has a rearguard scotch, I highly doubt, then that would be scary, especially with the new one. So, um, nice card. Next up, we have Cherry Blossom Musketeer, Augusto, for Neo Nectar. Grade 2, a unit that excel at, that is excellent as an attacker or guardian. You can draw by returning Musketeer from your dropped deck. So, in a nice way, you can just shuffle back your Musketeers, presumably, and you get a draw out of it. Not to mention, he's apparently a good attacker and a good guarder. He's probably like, if your Vanguard is a Musketeer, gets plus 5k power and 5k shield, or 2k power and 5k shield. It's all around. I think I like this grade 2. It's going to seem really interesting. Next up, grade 3, uh, Deep Green Lord Master Wisteria. I have not seen this card in so long, and I'm kind of interested to see that he's back. Grade 3, call a to plant token and add a card with the same card name as your rear guard to your hand. When he attacks, there's a skill to power up units with the same name. So, you know, get a unit with the same card name as your field, call it and then swing for power, and then you get a token the second he's placed. So, interesting. Or maybe just call plant token and search, like if it's an axe skill maybe. But it's still a good skill nonetheless, and I find it good. And then we have Thorn Lily Musketeer Cecilia Reverse. Great 3, a reverse unit that works on both Vanguard and Rear Guard. Repeated attacks also possible by calling Cecilia from deck, also by locking front row rear guards. So, it's probably like lock the front row rear guard. Call a copy of Cecilia. So, like, you swing with your rear guards in the front row. Swing with Van. Skill. Lock one of your rear guards. Call Cecilia. And then Cecilia does a thing. And then you swing. And then she probably also has a rear guard skill that's, like, at the end of the battle that she attacked. If you have a locked card, maybe send her to bottom. And then you just do it again, I guess. Maybe. I don't know. So, either way, Cecilia looks really nice. And I like that skill. Interesting. <clears throat> Next up, we have stuff from Aqua Force, and I'm very disappointed in this one. Tier Knight Valerie, grade 2, powers up on the 4th attack or more. Then if its attack hits, activate a skill, force your opponent to guard. Okay. <laughs> so that's very nice if it attacks on the 4th battle, probably. And then Cobalt Wave Dragon, grade 3, powers up every time your rear guards attack. Even after a strong attack, switch the front and back rows to conduct a continuous attack. So probably a really nice Vanguard as a budget, so... And that's what they're giving us that as an option for grade threes. I mean, it might just be a rearguard skill as well, but hey, it seems nice. And Bloomstorm Dragon Maelstrom Reverse. Grade three, I mean, Bloomstorm Calmer Dragon, sorry. Maelstrom Reverse. Grade three, power up by locking your rearguards every time your opponent guards. So probably like at the end of the battle, if your opponent plays a guard, lock your rear guard, and then this card gains the power of that rear guard. And if the opponent, or like for every grade of that card, you get plus five or plus three. And then if the opponent's guard 
If your opponent guards your vanguard's attack while you have a locked card, resistance is futile. Make a choice. Sacrifice yourself or your friends. So, interesting skill. That probably means he either gets a superior ride, a restand, or he starts nuking the board. So, either way, Maelstrom, I'm very interested to see what this is. But I'm very disappointed in Cobalt. And not because I don't think Cobalt's good, especially with that description, but they gave Weasels a grade 3, and Blue Wings needed a grade 3. This was the perfect time to give them a grade 3, but they didn't give Blue Wings a grade 3, and I'm very disappointed by that, because I feel like Blue Wings could have really used that grade 3. Even if they just gave, like, the main grade 3, not even the skill to restand if they pull a heal on Van, but still, it would have been nice to have one. So, mm, we'll take that as we will. Next up on the list, we have Steam Maiden Ilru. Grade 1, bind it. For a grade 2 from your hand to draw a card. Has a skill act after act attacking to swap with a grade 2 from your bind zone. So, really nice. Kind of interesting that it binds a grade 2 from your hand, though. Like, if it activates on Van, which it probably does, that does mean you kind of have to risk G assisting to get a draw out of it, but. You know, when it attacks, you get to swap for that grade 2 later. So I think it might be worth it, honestly. I can't really to, really wait to check it out. Next up, we have Steam Maiden Aru. By the way, I just want to say, I'm very glad that they made Steam, Raiden, Steam Maidens a ride line. Because technically, they had one before, but it wasn't really a good one. And now they kind of got a really nice one. And the thing that they chose to do it with, this one, if you don't remember, all the way back in G... This was a card that was made for Chrono, or was going to be his main grade 3, but then it was like kind of weird that he would ride a girl even though he was a guy. They made a joke out of it and something like that. I don't know if this card actually existed back in G, but this thing has a strange resemblance to it. So maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but I'm definitely glad it's back. Anyways, uh, Steam Maiden Aru, grade 2, bind a card from your drop for each grade of that card power up. It's probably going to be like bind a card from drop. For every grade of it, get plus 5 for the turn. And has a skill after attacking to swap with a grade 3 from your bind zone. So it seems like the thing with this ride line is just you kind of swap constantly with your unit. So you got to have a lot of cards with rear guard skills. But really nice to, to see that happen. And the grade 3, Steam Maiden Elu. At the end of the battle that your Steam Maiden attacked, swap that unit with a unit from your bind zone with grade plus 1. Connect the attack of your grade 0 Steam Maiden Alaru, I mean Luru, with the attack of Ilru and Alaru. So that's probably what it means. Like, you know, it's a once per turn at the end of the battle that your rear guard attack with Steam Aid and its card name. Um, pay the cost of Counter Boss 1, Soul Boss 1, maybe. Probably not the cost, but still. If you do, bind, a car bind the card that's attacked and call a card from Binds on with grade plus 1. So bind a Luru, call Ilru, then attack with Ilru, use her skill, call Alru, use her skill, I mean, after attacking, call Elu or another Steam Aid in grade 3, and all around just do like four attacks with the same column. I mean, a lure might not hit, but still. So, really nice. I like this ride line. It seems very interesting and definitely something I think about picking up. Like, I'm not, I don't really care. I really want to pick this up now because it seems really interesting. Especially with the representation of this card. Like, the moon in the background, those goddamn wings, that sword. Oh, she is beautiful. I cannot wait for this deck to come into real life. So, I, I will literally just play this second I get the chance probably. It's an interesting deck. Next up, we have Oracle Think Tank, Citrin Witch Moo Moo, so they brought back witches. Grade 1, draw a card when wrote upon by a witch unit. She can also rest herself to add a... Wait, what? Draw a card when wrote upon by a witch. Okay, so basically Circle Magus. And you can rest her to add a witch card from your top of the deck to hand. So probably meaning like rest her, look at top 2, add any number of witches from one them to hand. And grade 2, uh, Jade Witch Tay Tay. When discarded from your hand, if your vanguard is a witch, call it. Utilize this well by discarding it for sentinels. It can also handle sentinel restricting attacks. So, probably means... What does it mean by sentinel restricting attacks? Does that mean she can be used as a sentinel? Or does she... What do they mean by that? Does, do they actually mean by, like, when discarded for the cost of a sentinel, your opponent cannot, like, nullify sentinels? Or can she, like, on attack nullify sentinels? Is that what they mean? I'm not so sure which one, one it means. But really nice, because that means you can just discard it defensively and still get an interceptor out of it. It's like PG, discard her, and then you're not really losing any 5k shield because he's in grade 2, so she probably has intercept. And not to mention that you can just use it for discarding fucks anyways and then still get your cards back. So it's a really nice card. There's no minus in using her. And the grade 3, which, I mean, Bayonet, which, yo-yo, that's not how you say that, but uh, let me try again. Bayonet, tote, which, tote, yo-yo, grade 3, when rode upon, Either call it as a rear guard and get an extra protect marker. Then if your vanguard's a witch, it can change into another witch and make additional attacks. I'm not so sure what that means. 
because that part of the effect but i am sure that it's basically a brake ride skill to where you ride it you either call it or you're getting that protect marker so really nice and i like it and that allows um was it Zozo that did the plus 10? The, the thing that reveals any protect markers from your hand, your units get plus 10. So that's really nice. And it also allows more fodder with protect 2 because witches couldn't really do well with that protect 2, especially with Scar with Coco because Coco forced you to discard witches for it. Now you can kind of just discard um, Tete. I mean, yeah, no, sorry, it's Tete. Wait, what? Yeah, you can just discard Tete and then still get your... Um, protect markers and you can put the protect twos on there then again it's kind of like risky to do that i probably wouldn't do it but hey it's an interesting deck to see i can't wait to see that come out it's actually really good because me and my friend tried building a witch deck before and the one that mandala was interested in the one that's gonna i'm gonna stop after this one for the time being like i said when you see this video go up it's gonna be at the same time as the other one like they're still gonna be the same video it's just that at the time of recording this is the last one reveal that i have for now Amon's follower, Pooh Gremlin. Yes, my friend is really interested in seeing Amon come back. The grade one of the ride line. Both players put, can put cards from their hand into soul to draw a card. Then he increases his power based on how many cards are in the opponent's soul. So, basically, probably an on-place van or rear. Both players shove a hand card to soul. They draw a card, so easily replacement. Weird that they're giving the opponent soul blast, though, but okay. And then, he can increase the power number of cards in your opponent's soul. So, by the power. So... Interesting that now it's a Dark Red deck that focuses on the opponent's soul. I've noticed that how Dark Reds have been changing a lot. Like, all their decks up until Reiji all focused on just having a bunch of soul cards in their soul. Reiji was like, bind this, I'm unique. And now Amon still focuses on the soul, but now he focuses on the opponent's soul. And I find it very interesting. And I'm not, not going to lie, I actually do find this interesting. I wonder why. Like, they're giving him a lot of resources to work with. But it's an interesting deck theme, actually. And I'm kind of curious about this. And, um, let's see, Amon's follower, Ron Gremlin, grade 2, when plays Soul Charge 1, depending on your opponent's choice, uh, you're, you may Soul Charge more, you may Soul Charge even more, increase his power and shield based on how many cards are in your opponent's soul. Now, once more, I find this interesting, because I'm not sure if they mean, it probably means your Soul Charge, but they also can, it gets more power and shield based on their soul amount. Now, as a card, as a fellow card creator, because I am working on a card game with my friends, um... I, yeah, well, I'm not necessarily good at it, or at least I don't classify myself as good at it. I always find, I've noticed that I find things more interesting and I look more into cards because, like, I need to know how they work, what is the reasoning behind them. And I find this as an interesting, really nice play because you have a unique build. Like, you have the deck that focuses all on soul. And instead of kind of just going along with the theme and making the deck really good, which I understand why, because then the deck might get banned really quickly. They make it focused on the opponent's soul, which gives them resources, but also by the looks of this, it gets shut down if they have enough soul blast costs. So it's a really interesting thing here, like against Genesis, it's probably going to fucking kill you. Like, if you're playing against Genesis, unless you play it right, you're probably giving them a loaded gun and just say, here, shoot me right in the kneecap as I don't bother moving. Here, you know what, here, better yet, shoot me in the point blank to the head. That's probably what's going to happen, but... Otherwise, it's a very interesting build and I can't wait to kind of test that out. And Demon World Marquee, Amon, Grade 3, his super powerful skill forces cards from your opponent's hand and even their rear guards to soul. So, he can take their rear guards, shove them to soul, and your opponent's hand. Now, it's weird that they say cards from hand and even their field. What do they mean by even? It makes it sound like the field is more important. I know I'm reading into this, but it makes the field sound like it's more important. So, what is it like casually send them cards from hand to soul, then if they're vanguards at grade 3, they send a rear guard to soul? Then get a major power boost depending on how many cards are in the, each and both players' soul. Oh. So that's why he was stacking the soul. So grade 1 stacks both. Grade 2 probably stacks the opponent. And then, like, because obviously your own deck, in most of the Dark Regulars, will just stack your own soul. And then Amon, while only stacking their soul, also gets power from it. And he is a king that burns down everything from the heavens all the way down to the earth. Something tells me that's meant to just say, fuck you, Angel Feather. I don't know why. Because <laughs> they said heavens, and for some reason, I think of heavens, I think of Angel Feather. For some reason, I feel like they're trying to strike down Angel Feather here. But interesting. I'm curious about this one. This actually seems like an interesting deck, and I cannot wait to see what Mondo's opinion is on this because I sent him it this morning, and we have yet to talk about it. I really want to see his opinion on this because I want to... I kind of want to test play this now. I don't know what its skill is, but I might just call Bushy and say like, Hey, can you give me like an advanced copy of that skill? You know, I'm not going to tell anyone, but I would really like to test that shit out. So, interesting. I like this. Really interesting de deck. I can't wait to try this next.
And we are back with the second set of reveals for today. So now that I've had a live reaction to other things, I have to say, who? I cannot wait to get to the things that got revealed today. But let's go ahead and finish up what we had last time, and then we'll continue on with what we had today. So first up, we have Witches of Apple Cider, Sunlight Goddess Yagarasu, and Demise Demon Queen, I mean Demise Queen, Himiko Reverse. So a lot of people are interested in Himiko coming back, and honestly, I kind of am too, because Himiko was the first main grade 3, I think, besides Artemis, but a lot of people, I think, ran Himiko more than Artemis at the start of Genesis, and then Astral Poets came in, and then afterwards, um, Genesis for Artemis got support. I mean, I guess it was Regalia's by that time, but still, Divine Gage in general got rep support, and then Femrir, and Himiko just kind of stuck with the sloppy seconds, and now Himiko's got a reverse form, so I'm kind of liking this. So let's go ahead and get the cards for them. First up, Cider, the grade one. After it's boosted, it can return to the hand. After it boosted, not after it's boosted. It can return to the hand by soul charging, and when placed as a guardian, the more cards you have in soul, the stronger its shield is. So it's probably really good. You know, you swing, you soul charge one maybe, bounce it, and then when you place it on guard for every five cards or three cards in soul, it gets plus 5k shield. Honestly, I, I would look really forward to that, because that's actually a really good skill. That is its skill. Uh, the grade three, Sound Like Goddess Yada Garasu. I swear I know her from somewhere. I remember her art faintly, and I remember that name faintly, and I know I sp almost spam her in Zero, but I forgot if she ever appeared in the anime. She probably didn't. I'm just being really stupid. But I liked her in Zero, so I'm glad that she's coming back. A grade three, when it attacks, it has a skill that activates on the number of rear of the number of grades you soul blast. Also, it has a skill that increases the shield of your guardians. So that is really nice because. A, you know, you're getting multiple soul blasts out, it can get a certain effect out of it, and you can increase your guardians. So I'm all around really for that. I'd say that's a probably really good backup grade three or even a main grade three. And Demise Queen Hemi Code Reverse. Grade three, activate trigger effects by placing them as locked cards at the end of your turn by riding on Hemi Code or the original one during your opponent's turn. Hmm. So that's interesting. So that probably means, you know, it's really nice because the old Himiko, you were soul blast five, put a crit or a draw to bottom, you activate its effects equal to the opponent's vanguard grades. So what I'm getting from this is you don't activate it to the number of vanguard grades your opponent has, but you just place it down as a lock, which in granted at the time decreases your field amount, but the next turn A, you kind of call it a trigger, so I think it's worth it. I mean, you're losing 15, five to 15K shield, five to 20, depending on what heal triggers you run. But at the same time, you're also getting the benefit of activating your triggers. So I say it's fine with it. Followed by riding Himiko during your opponent's turn. So now we just have Hanzo ripoff. I don't. I mean that in like the least offensive way possible because I'm. I am actually interested for that because it's one thing to get protect gifts during your opponent's turn. It's another thing to get force gifts there during, during their turn. Granted, the protect gifts are active during the opponent's turn, while the force gifts are not. But next turn, foo, they're fucking trouble. And that was one of the main things about Fortuna. It got really good really quickly. I mean, it wasn't the best, but because her skill wasn't the best. But in terms of that force gift ability, it was really good. So, kind of can't wait to see what Himiko does. So, interesting. Next up, we have the Takikaze boys. Now, literally the day before when I recorded the first half, I think, of this site was, I think I said I wanted them to bring back, um, or maybe this was in the Blaze Maiden deck profile, but I wanted them to bring back the... Um, tarot cards the not the tarot cards sorry the uh pterodactyl cards as a deck or like make a deck for pterodactyls they brought back raptors i'm not saying i'm oh, ha i'm saying i'm not happy about raptors because i actually did want raptors back i wanted them back a long time ago now i'm kind of out of it but i'm glad that they came back because i did answer one of my prayers not the one i was open about so military dragon raptor sergeant raptor captain and raptor colonel all with the respective abilities of grade one for sergeant when it rides add a grade two or grade raptor to your hand so I'm assuming that just means straight from deck the second you ride this, get your win con, so sure. It has a skill that can add armed gauges to your rear guards. So interesting, interesting. So unfortunately, that's another deck that focuses on equip gauges. Like, come on, people. The only deck that we have that doesn't focus on equip gauges is true ancient dragons. And even then, their new ancient dragon buddies do focus on them. It, like, Dark and Regulus is someone in the same boat where most of their decks focus on soul blasting, and then Ragey was the only one that didn't focus on, I mean, soul charging, sorry. And Ragey was the only one that didn't focus on soul charging. And then Amon came in and does a similar thing to both of them. At, well, not both of them, but like, it sticks with the old Dark and Regulus thing, but makes it a lot better and more, I guess, modernized, or like, a get, still makes enough different. This doesn't do anything different, but sure. Uh, Raptor Captain, grade 2, when it's written on call, multiple grade 2 lower raptors, so probably just from your hand. When retired by your ability, if you had an arm gauge, return it to the hand, I mean return it to the field. So pretty much 
kill it for stuff like Gaia, call right back, gets an effect off, cool. And grade three, devours allies to strengthen itself. If you eat a lot of allies, more powerful skills will activate. Crush your foes with double strike dragon slash. It probably means it gets like an extra crit or it can restand at the end of the battle for like killing five rear guards. It's probably not gonna be five, but it might be five, I don't know. It's interesting, I'm very disappointed that they brought back the equip gauge thing again, like, Bushy, please, for love of God, Dark Irregulars did something different, and even so slightly different with Amon, can you give us something different for these boys? Because I would really appreciate it. Like, we haven't even gone back to like the whole retire thing, like, yeah, that's mainly what Trinja Dragons are, actually, it's not even, it's just what all Takikaze has nowadays, but like, come on, go back to the main retire thing, or go back to anything that's not equip gauge, basically, it gets really annoying after a while. It's still interesting, though. Next up, we have Head of Bandits, Takigiro, AK base, 5k shield, grade 1 with boost, act rear, counter boss 1 ton of turn, this unit can attack, this unit in the back row can attack your opponent's back row units, so pretty much you have an AK swinger who can go for back row but nothing else, so interesting, and continues rear, during your turn if you have a seeking the best place in your order zone, all of your wooden sword Ryu on your vanguard get plus 5, and this unit is also treated as my buddies, I don't think we've had that yet, but I'm pretty sure that's a grade 3 for Ryu, and I know my buddies is, so this gets really annoying really quickly when you figure out what that is, so interesting card I say 4 of, next up we have seeking the best place, a uh, great wait ah, grade one set order play it by if you have a wooden sword ryu unit so that means it could also be on rear but still continuous order zone all of your my buddies on rear cannot be chosen or retired by your opponent's card abilities auto order zone when you're seeking when you're either seeking the best place is played put it to soul choose one of your vanguards with ryu in its card name and it gets plus one crit i mean wooden sword ryu in its card name and it gets plus one crit so a way to increase crit a way to increase soul by playing more of them and can give your my buddy cards resist okay interesting four but what is my buddy this is my buddy interesting art 7k base 5k show i don't know why when i look at this i think of ben k from beyblade um beyblade shogun steel is the more version i get from him but like if you know what like when jenga's arc came in that's the type of beyblade i'm referring to but i look at this one more as the so gun steel one where he was a mentor to the main character why i'm going back to this is beyond me but still anyways continues me up to nine copies of it in your deck continues rear when your other unit with a wooden sword ryu or my buddies is attacked it gets intercept so it basically can defend its other allies sure but you're still losing a copy of it anyways so like i understand why it would protect the vanguard ryu but i don't understand why it would protect itself but sure uh three of four of nine of i don't know i really don't <laughs> probably the nine of now we have Mega Colony, who I am really glad they brought back this motherfucker. Brilliant Blaster, Blister, that's not a, I think that's a new card, so I'm not talking about him that I'm glad that they brought back. Anyways, we have Machining Armor Beetle and Martial Arts Mutant Master Beetle. I am really fucking glad they brought him back, because they haven't done any real paralyzing shenanigans. When I say paralyze, I mean they can't stand. The most thing they have to that right now is um, Giraffa, so I really cannot wait to see what Master Beetle does. So grade one for blister if your opponent has no stand units you can return this card to your hand and draw a card so it's probably like at the start of your main phase uh, if they have no stand like start of your turn bounce it draw like they at the start of their turn who knows and then it has a super powerful skill to stop your opponent's rear guard attacks before they can be declared so probably when it's placed on guard circle rest the rear guard so if the attack doesn't hit which would be really nice it's kind of like the old um link joker pg where if it doesn't hit it was for starvators if it doesn't hit you can um lock one of your opponent's rear guards to make them lock one so that's really nice grade two paralyze an opponent's rear guard it also has an interruption skill that sails off intercept and boost so probably like what um, Nasty Smog and the Grade 2 Draft would do, where when they're in a column, the units in it cannot boost or intercept. So I really like how they do that, because uh, Draft had the move in Lockdown Intercept. Nasty Smog had Lockdown Intercept and Stand for the back row. And then this boy can now possibly still intercept and boost, which is really, I like it really much. And then Master Beetle, the one I'm most excited about, especially with that art over there. Grade 3, paralyze multiple opponents' rear guards and steal their power, then increase this unit's drive count depending on the number of either player's rest rear guards. Okay, it probably means like swing into your opponent's field for every two of your rested rear guards, uh, paralyze one of theirs, and then for every like two rear guards on the board that are rested, it gets plus one drive if the opponent's at grade three or greater, which is why I would really like that. That would actually be an interesting skill, and I would like to see that because kind of takes a bit of focus of, yeah, you have to have rest your rear guards, not paralyze them, but you can paralyze the opponent's rear guards, and it can paralyze multiple rear guards at once and steal their power, meaning it's easier to hit force numbers. Like, I'm assuming that means ret, paralyze a grade two, get the 9k. All around, I like that ability. Seems very interesting. Can't wait to see that happen. Now, we have Raging Fall Dragon Reverse. <laughs> Now, I hate the Link Joker, I mean, not the Link Joker cards, Starvator. I keep calling them Starvator and Link Joker cards. I hate the Revenger cards. 
but not for the reason you think. And it's actually for the reason that I just said. I hate them because they look so much like Star Vaders to me and like Carts and Leech up like fucking Raging Fall right there. I swear in my mind when I first saw him, it was a chaos. If it wasn't for that little part of his cape that was the puff, I would have thought he was a chaos without even a second doubt. But he's not. He's a Revenger, which is the like shocking part to me. If they didn't look, I know they're meant to look like Star Vader cards because like they reverse things, but it looks more like a Link Joker card than it looks like anything fucking else. Like, straight up, if you take that cape off him, I would tell you immediately that's a grade three from Link Joker. I wouldn't even question it. But, um, self control Revenger Reika, the grade one, when it's rolled upon by a Revenger, search your deck for one Revenger and call it to Rear's deck. Call it to deck. Call it from deck, not as deck. And as a rear guard, it has a powerful skill to help increase the number of allies. So pretty much, you know, has a ride upon skill, which I always like those. And a way to increase your number of allies probably means like when it dies, uh, call something. Or like when it's locked, call something. Hint, hint, falling is going to have a locked ability. Grade 2, Overcoming Revenger Rukia. When rode upon by a Revenger, search your deck for to one Revenger, add it to hand. Powers up even if you have a grade 1 Revenger on your field. And a great combo piece with Ruka. So that makes sense. Like they're both meant to be like put together. Especially with the way their arts are which is another thing i hate they have like such a good art theme and then fall doesn't like go with it at all which is why i hate it like fall looks so much like a star vader and like a link joker card all the way and then those two like their background may be plain in my opinion but hey it's a theme and then like those two have it but then fall does it. it's just really bothering to me but those two look like they have a legion art somewhat so i can't i kind of want to line those up and see that later so interesting and then we have revenger raging fall dragon reverse uh, grade 3, you can perform multiple attacks while powering up by locking your rear guards. Ride it through the skill of Revenger Raging Form Dragon and sink your opponent into the abyss with a continuous chain of attacks. So, since Raging Form can be pulled off twice in the same turn if you play it right, which means you could effectively just gain 3 Vanguard attacks for 6 drives, he'll probably do the same, if not ever so slightly worse, like to deal with. Because for that to go off, when I did anyways, I had to sack all of my rear guards but at the same time, I was at limit break four. I might have been able to like call one, so I'd have one extra rear guard. So maybe that's what it means. Like you swing with two of them, you ride, fall, and then like you kind of just lock an extra rear guard. I'm not so sure. It seems interesting though. I like the idea behind it, and I kind of can't wait to see it. I do like that art. Though. That art's fucking cool. I just mind that's a Star Vader. And now, big boy reveals. If you remember from like two weeks ago, I made a video that was about what I want to see out of Overdress. And I said Evolved Forms. Now I knew they would eventually give us Evolved Forms, especially because I think Season 3 and 4 are already greenlit. I know they have talked about a Season 3 and Season 4 and that it's most likely greenlit, I just want to make sure. And I knew at some point if they were greenlit they would probably get these. But we have confirmation. In Set 4, we are getting Evolved Forms of all of the main Grade 3s, which is fucking nice. Like we already knew about Esper Ideal over here, so this is not what I'm excited about. But yes! New Nirvana! Bushy, thank you! You listened! I don't know what their effects are going to be, but if there anything like I said before that Bushy saw the video, for some reason, or I just am really good at predicting the future. One of those two. <laughs> but yes, Bushy, thank you. Okay, so anyways, let's talk about these. New Nirvana, yeah, those wings, I like them. They kept their old colors. This motherfucker right here, he has, he's now standing on his legs. He looks like a divine beast with the flames just coming out of everywhere. If I stared this thing down, I would die by just pure shock. I would be trembling under this motherfucker. I cannot wait to use, I will break my wallet on this. This, as I'm going to break my wallet on a lot of things this year, but still, I love this and I cannot wait to see this in real life. Give me the effect, Bushy. Give it to me. We have the new Bruce and Bastion. Okay, Bastion's art. I like it. I like it. I like the little battlefield he's standing on. He looks really cool. He, lo he looks like a lot bigger, so it looks like he's kind of become like the main leader. Like that's the way I think about because he's got the three angels in the background and like the hidden fourth angel. So if you don't, quick spoilers for season two. If you don't want to hear it, skip like two minutes later in the video. This is like Donji because you know he left the group. This is like um, one of these two. I'm not so sure which one it is. Would be Yu Yu because like they're you know they're closer to Toya, and then one of them probably this one would be Megumi because she's not as close to Toya, and then the other one that isn't Yu Yu over between these two would be Tomari, the announcer. So it's very interesting because like it feels like Toya took over the group now, which is really nice, and I think that's maybe a bit of symbolism in his card. Either way, that looks really cool, and then Bruce. I'm somewhat disappointed in it. I like his art. He looks like he's really into the action. Looks like he's just mashing through all the people there and kind of fitting his style. Like now he's no longer the big boss of the group, but now like, you know, so he's on his own and he's just pushing through everyone. But my problem with it, it doesn't look like he evolved that much. Like he looks like he kind of just kept the same armor and like they just 
um, intensified the highlights a bit. Like they showed more color of it with, like they just gave it brighter colors. I like the new background though. It's just like, and I like the art in general, but like it doesn't feel like he evolved. Like everyone else got like a really cool look change. It just looks like they brightened the armor colors a bit, like to where they just gave him new armor. That's my opinion on it. But hey, still looks really cool. And that's just a little bit of symbolism between the two. That's my opinion on it. It might have a completely different meaning or it might just be something random. But that's how I see it. And then we have our new Magnolia and our new Seraph Snow. Okay, as you know, Seraph Snow is my least favorite deck. But when I also made the deck, I mean, the what I want to see out of Overdress, I also talked about how I had some art set up. Somehow, despite the fact I never said what Seraph Snow's art was, this somewhat nails it. Because these were literally a part of my art when I was describing it to someone. And then so was somewhat these chains. And then the hair. So... How Bushy figured that out is beyond me. Maybe that's just coincidence, but at the same time, mm, I'm just saying, it feels kind of weird that I somewhat predicted part of this thing's art. Still, it looks really fucking cool. She looks kind of like the sexy librarian to me. Not that I'm into Seraph Snow. I want to let that be clear right now. Seraph Snow is still my least favorite deck out of everyone until I see what this thing does. But in terms of like, if we were to start doing things. I'm saying that she looks like the sexy librarian because of like art wise and big fucking hands and chains. And then we have Magnolia. I don't know what to say about this one and not like in the way that I think about Bruce because in my opinion Bruce is like the least upgraded one in terms of self art but in terms of like all overall he's one of my favorites. Magnolia. I like that art. I like that it's flying. It's grown two more pairs of wings clearly because I think it only had four or no yeah it only had two before maybe four in total. But now it has two more pairs, I mean, another pair of wings at the bottom down here. And this armament right here. Oh, yes, the weapons. Oh, big furry puppy. I love this. Bushy, thank you. And it's confirmed that they're all in set four. I cannot wait to break my wallet on these. <laughs> hey, 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 I know this is like a barely begging question, but can someone pay me enough money to buy playsets of all of these? Because I really fucking want these now. I don't even know if they do, and I will still take them. So I'm going to end it here. I really want to hear your guys' opinions on these new things, like all of just the, the little blurbs that we got. I want to hear your opinion on these new cards that one of them I somehow predicted somewhat. And I just want to hear everyone's opinion on these. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, donate to the Patreon, join the Discord, follow the Twitch, and I'll see you all in the next one. Don't forget to stand up. You're Vanguards.